publishers are going to stop producing paper. I don't know where we'd put it, and I don't know how we'd power it. What you need to be able to do on these new systems is to be able to do everything you can do. Have you heard about the end of paper charts? My name's Ed, I'm the principal from Ardent Training, and you're about to see a recording of a live webinar I did with my students. We run these um, every couple of weeks for our students, and this one in particular is from our Masterclass series. Admittedly, it's not so much a masterclass as a news item, um, but there we go, hopefully it's still interesting. Our students certainly thought so. If you've got any more questions about anything you hear about in this particular recording, you can always head over to our website, ardent-training.com, and ask us more in person. Just use the live chat feature on our website. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, any questions, just let us know. I've been lucky enough to hear some of us firsthand from the UKHO and from the MCA, as well as the RYA, at sort of conferences that, that we attend. So I just thought I'd pass it on to you guys so that you know what to expect is coming up to. And it's the end of paper charts, which is quite shocking considering how much of the course we do on paper charts but there we go that's why we're going to cover it it's it's something that's relevant and just to structure this uh, i'm going to start by going through what what is the end of paper charts um when's it going to happen why is it happening and probably the most important thing of all we'll save it to the end how it's going to affect us as uh, yacht skippers right start at the top what pretty simple the publishers are going to stop producing paper charts. They're going to stop printing them. They're going to stop publishing them. They're going to stop selling them. Therefore, we won't be able to buy them. They will not exist. Uh, and when is it going to happen? So we've got the UK Hydrographic Office uh, just over a year ago, July 2022. They came out of this shock announcement, came out of nowhere. No one was expecting it. Uh, said they're going to stop printing paper charts in 2026. I say no one's expecting it. We're expecting it to happen at some point, but it may be a decade, not not 2026. That's pretty close. And what they've actually said is that they're going to stop. They have two two databases. They've raster chart databases and vector chart databases. The raster database is what they use to make paper charts. They said they're going to stop. They're going to get rid of that database entirely, just to use vector, which is the the best one for electronic charts. Um, and with that, they're also going to stop printing any paper. Uh, they're not going to try and print any paper from the other database, which would be a new thing for them. They're not going to do that. So no more paper. Of course, the big surprise made quite an uproar in the industry. And um, sort of about six months later, early 2023, they went back on that and said, actually, we're going to move that date to 2030 instead of 2026. So that being said, that's the UK 8J, which is one publisher of charts. And it's just one publisher. Uh, there's also other common publishers. I've got Inray and NOAA in here. Inray is one, obviously, local to us in the UK. NOAA is uh, from the USA. They've actually, they kind of made this announcement a while ago. They, they've been working on this already since 2017. But they've got a very different approach to the UKHO. The UKHO said, we are not making paper charts. Noah said, they're also getting rid of their raster database, but they're going to print paper charts on demand from their vector database. But yeah, so they, they've already started this process and they've said no more raster from 2025. And they're going from printing lots of charts and putting them in shops to printing them on demand. So you'll select an area and uh, and they'll print that area for you. The UKHO and the Admiralty, they make charts for big ships primarily. That's that's why they make them for the Navy and for commercial shipping. Uh, Inray have always been there for the yachtsmen like ourselves. And actually, if you have ever had the chance to use an Inray chart, which are recognized, officially recognized for, for use uh, for navigation, they tailor what's on there to be more suitable for yachts. So a big ship's anchorage might be taken off and instead they'll include um, a little symbol where the pub is. So much more useful for yachtsmen. Raster and vector are words that I have already thrown around and I probably will throw around quite a lot more. Uh, so raster, they're the first digital charts that were made. 
and you can think of it as if you take your paper chart and you scan it into your computer and then the computer puts your position fix on the paper chart for you vector on the other hand they take every detail on the chart and they add in um they'll add in information and a position for that precise so every depth sounding will have a position tied to it every boy will have a position and a symbol and information about it and each piece of information is separate and your software chooses what information to display to you so as you zoom in it's going to add on more and more detail and as you zoom out it's going to say oh it's getting really cluttered i'm going to remove half these depth soundings out and it's very responsive to uh, exactly what we're showing on our screen whereas paper if you zoom in or raster sorry if you zoom in on a raster chart it's the same as if you look closely at a paper chart right you don't get more detail it just gets a bit blurry and pixelated if i am going if I'm going fast, I've seen a few questions popping in already. Just chuck any questions you got in the chat and Lauren will interrupt me. Um, or we've got Stuart, I think we've got Alan Denham on, on as well, two of our instructors, and they might even pop you an answer if they're, if they're feeling kind. <laughs> so if we've got the UKHO stop in, but NOAA still providing paper charts and InRay still providing paper charts, why do we care? Why was it such a big deal in the industry? And to answer that, you really need to know a lot about the UKHO. You need to know who the UKHO are. The UKHO are a UK government organisation. Most governments around the world have an organisation, um, a, a, a hydrographic office dedicated to making charts of their waters. And the UKHO is, is the one in England, uh, in Britain, in the UK. It was formed in 1795 specifically to support the Royal Navy. And it's quite a good story why. At the time, in 1795, um, so the first digital charts was the Admiralty Raster Chart Service. Uh, so they started making raster charts in 1994. And actually, now to the really important bit, I've brought you a bit of history, but the reason that we care so much is not only are they one of the oldest hydrographic offices, um, but also Admiralty products, they claim i've not verified this but their products are in around 90 percent of vessels worldwide i think we could safely say that's probably commercial vessels or because because we know that every rib out there doesn't have admiralty products on because they don't have any paper on board 90 percent of shipping worldwide is huge absolutely huge and so that's why when the ukho said we're not making paper charts anymore everyone was left shocked uh, and a bit confused as to what was going to be next. And just to really emphasize this point, NOAA, they currently produce 1,200 electronic navigation charts. The UKHO currently publishes 18,260. But you can see just how big the UKHO are. That is why it's so um, important that we all listen to UKHO when they say they're not making paper charts anymore. So why aren't they making them anymore? Now, what they say, what they stand in front of you and, and say at, at this conference I was at was, it's all about new possibilities, improving efficiency in shipping, which is a nice thought. But if you look at their sales information, I think we get to the real reason. Again, I don't know this, this is speculation, but if we look at these two charts on the screen, uh, we've got on the on the left, we've got the percentage of their sales, their chart sales in digital and paper. All right. Green is in digital and blue is in paper. And you can see in 2011, it's pretty equal. It's a little bit more digital, but it's fairly equal. But by the time you get up to where does this one end? 22, 85 percent of their chart sales are in digital and that number continues to grow and for someone like me i would immediately look at that and say yeah but that 15 percent that could be all the small craft that could be all the yachts and similar small vessels we don't have an alternative so maybe that 15 percent is never going to change and they should keep doing their paper for that 15 percent. maybe that is the limit you know 85 15 uh, but actually their sales figures for small craft charts for ones that they produce, publish specifically designed for yachts, they're, they're plummeting as well. It's fallen 60% in the last four years. 
So actually, we're all guilty of not buying as many paper charts as well. And that's basically why they are probably um, not going to produce paper charts anymore. I'm sort of saying here about the big ships, they produce for big ships, and maybe they're not paying attention to us. And here's my backup for my my reasoning behind that that trail of thought. This is why they this is their table they produce, which details their stakeholders. And they put them in segments. And number one, they've got commercial traffic with uh, over 500 grace tons, um, over 3,000 grace ton tankers, big ships. And then if you work your way all the way down that scale, you get to fishing vessels near the bottom. They're clearly not as important as the big ships, uh, as the, the tankers and the cruise ships. And then right down the bottom, they say pleasure vessels under 150 grace tons. Now that's that's kind of crazy to just say pleasure vessels under 150 grace tons. I've just grabbed two images off the internet of a, a small rib and a 100 ton motor yacht, super yacht, which both fall under pleasure vessels under 150 tons. And they're considering the products they supply as those two are the same, you know, just a, a chance to understand the UKHO's view of us. We're maybe not the uh, most important stakeholder to them. So this did have a much bigger impact than the UKHO realised it was going to have. They thought, OK, we're hardly making paper charts anymore anyway. We'll just stop. Um, we'll do it in a couple of years. They didn't think of, I don't, well, I say, I don't think they were thinking of us at the bottom of their stakeholder list. And actually, if you take away our paper charts, we don't have anything that's considered a legal alternative as far as SOLAS, uh, the SOLAS convention or the IMO is concerned. So regulations need to change, basically, before the UKHO stops make, publishing paper charts, because otherwise we're left with, you know, in, in this sort of lost zone in the middle. Um, so they're causing, by not making paper charts, they're causing regulations to change. And that's when everyone's jumped in, the IMO, the RYA, the MCA, um, all, all these big international or government organisations have all said, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Um, let's let's think about this and talk about this and they've actually agreed to push the date back to 2030 so that's why they've uh, someone asked why they pushed the date back from 2026 it's because it's because the, the sort of legal framework needs to catch up um, and the reason it needs to catch up is when they're looking at the big ships they their legal alternative to paper charts are these ECDIS systems electronic chart display information system if a big cargo ship or something or a cruise ship has two of these, they don't need paper charts anymore. They need to have two of these and they need to each have two power sources. And the reason that they have these and we don't on yachts is A, they're very big and very expensive. They're actually getting a lot smaller, but they cost, I think the cheapest one I found is about £10,000. So on a little, on our MIFA, I don't know where we'd put it and I don't know how we'd power it. We'd have to redesign our entire boat around this one system. And you need two before you're allowed to get rid of your paper charts. You need a backup one. One reason they are so expensive as well is because there's so many regulations about uh, uh, so many standards they have to meet before they can be considered an ECDIS, which even includes like colour matching on the monitors. So it displays the right shade of blue on your chart uh, and also the manning requirements. Not only do you need to attend a special ECDIS course before you can use one of these but you also need then to have a second round of training on the specific system you have on your boat so these ships they at any one point in the day they always need to have someone who's not only trained on ectis but also trained on that specific system that's not possible on yachts when i when when i'm working on various boats i'll jump on a different one every few weeks i can't then have to do a new training course on every system on every different boat this change from getting rid of paper and going going digital, this is a change that's been a long time coming. I think we've we've all seen it coming. We all know it's coming. Um, and there's a lot of good reasons to switch away from paper charts and onto electronic charts. Uh, the 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 most glaringly obvious one is actually there are less accidents. Um, due to poor navigation, now we have these digital alternatives. It's it's the difference between when we're working solely on paper with no no chart plotter, 
it takes us a few minutes either to get bearings with our compass or even just to plot the Latin long. It takes us a number of minutes and every position we plot is at least six minutes old. Whereas with the chart plotter, it's near real time. It's pretty much where we are right now. There's a small delay, but yeah, insignificant. And this change is, is going to be good for us because whereas these big ships have had their exodus and have been able to ad adopt new systems legally and officially, uh, we've always been held back by these regulations. Now they're being forced to come up with a solution that works for us. So it's actually going to pull us forwards, whereas previously we've kind of been held back. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. Navionics and RYA and all these organisations that we're familiar with have been invited to discuss and collaborate on, on this change and to try and work out what the new system for us is going to be. Uh, we're going to be well represented in terms of making sure that what we get is going to be useful for us and not too expensive and not too ridiculous. It's a bit tricky because when we're teaching these courses, we not only have to teach how to use paper charts, but it's actually also a really good way. It makes a better sailor because you get a real in-depth understanding of what's happening. When we plot the tide on the chart and we can, we get a much better feeling of how it's going to affect us on our journey. But there are a lot of benefits to go digital. Someone who reports a change like a buoy has been moved or replaced or a, a light that now flashes a different sequence, those updates to navigation marks, they can take weeks to, to make their way through the UKHO and then get published to us as notice to mariners. And then realistically, I think we're all guilty of probably not updating our charts as regularly as we should. I know a lot of boats update them once a year. So our charts are pretty much always out of date, our paper charts, digital charts. Every time we get a connection, they can update. So that's that's really good. And like I say, we've got near real time position. So we know where we are rather than where we were. Projected vectors are really useful rather than projecting an EP from our position. You know, we can they just switch a button and it will draw a line of where we're going to be in six minutes time. Safety depths, you can you can change the, where that blue goes from uh, white to light blue to dark blue. We can make our chart really specific to our vessel uh, and, and we can actually set alarms on the late on the ECDIS systems. You can set an alarm that will tell you if you're going to go into shallow water in two minutes time. Wonderful features that we should all be using. Uh, obviously, digital charts as well. The quantity of data, the amount you can fit on your on your screen, as opposed to on a paper chart, you can zoom in, you can right click on things and get the extra info. So we all know there's a lot of benefits to using electronic charts uh, as as well as or instead of paper charts. And we already have these digital charts. We all have Navionics on our phone or Savvy Navi or what whatever takes you fancy. Uh, what's happening is now they're just going to uh, regulate them a bit more and make sure they are appropriate and they are safe for us to use, which, which is which is great. Get rid of that warning message every time we fire up Navionics that says this is not safe to use for navigation. <laughs> uh, and of course, there are some costs as well. It's we shouldn't forget that getting out our lovely big A1 or A2 chart and spreading it out on the table and planning our week ahead that's really useful. We get a, a really good awareness looking at the shape of the coastline. We can kind of predict how the weather's going to move or funnel, where the tide's going to be um, speeding up. We lose that with the smaller screens. We, once we've got, you know, a, a little chart plotter, we can only ever see some useful detail in a small, for a small area. As soon as we zoom out, we lose all the detail and we, we just don't get the same feeling. And also the electronic charts have really breed complacency. As soon as you start switching your chart plotter on and ignore and not getting your paper charts out, um, that's when we start to, to really make mistakes. We start to spend less time planning our passages, less time looking at what the tide's going to be doing, how the weather might react around the coast. Um, and, and yeah, so it just makes complacent sailors. So there are also a lot of benefits to still using paper and learning on paper, especially. So we're not getting this. We're not all going to shell out 30 grand, um, 60 grand for two of them on our on our boat. We're also not going to be just suddenly allowed to use Navionics on our phone. That's that's also not going to be an option. What we what we are going to get, we don't actually know. This is why the date's been pushed back is because currently no one knows what's going to fill the gap. They're currently having 
regular meetings and i imagine they must be going around in circles and circles trying to create a standard um that everyone will be able to meet to provide electronic charts for yachts and i know speaking to craig burton at the oia i know he said that they have meetings on this at least once a month and it just goes on and on and on and it's going to take them years to figure it out once they've got those standards then people like raymarine Navionics, they can then produce the equipment that we are going to be allowed to use. Uh, what I can do is give you some idea about what is going to change for us uh, and with our courses. You're all in the middle of a course where, whether you're a day skipper or yacht master, there's a lot of paper navigation involved. That is um, still going to be 100% valid. You're not going to have to redo your skipper's ticket in 2030. So the, the RYA syllabus, there will be a change in emphasis, but not in uh, the overall syllabus. And by a change in emphasis, it's going to be we are able to get our information from an electronic device, but we're not going to be reliant on, we're still not going to be reliant on GNSS. What that means is our tide tables or our almanac might be able to be an ebook. Our tide tables will have tidal curves that will automatically fill themselves in. Like if you've gone on Easy Tide on 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 the internet or um, Imray Tides Planner app on your phone, that's going to be a, a, a much more officially accepted and practiced method. Just got a question here from uh, Alison Lardy uh, yep. on that. She says, "Does that mean that existing systems on yachts like Ray Marine could potentially be redundant?" Um, yeah, absolutely. They definitely could. And how they're going to navigate the, you know, having telling us that we've all got to buy a new £5,000 chart plotter, I don't know. It's possible that they'll come up with a standard which they can apply with a software update. If, if a, a certain screen size and having a certain set of buttons, it might be that the plotter doesn't need thrown out and a new one put in. It might be that it just needs a software update. But like I say, we are guessing and i know that budget is a, a heavy consideration if they ever gonna get all us leisure sailors to adhere to these new regulations they need to make it affordable for us to do um so yeah hopefully they'll go they'll, they'll go down that route we are gonna still gonna need to know how to navigate without gnss and you might think oh there's loads of satellite systems we'll always have connections to GN gnss that's not true on the west coast of Scotland here, twice a year, when NATO do their joint warrior naval exercises, they jam the GNSS signals um, and you can no longer use your chart plotter. But what you need to be able to do on these new systems is to be able to do everything you can do on paper on the, um, on the new electronic charts. What that means is at the moment on your rain marine, I doubt you're able to work out your tide, tidal stream information and plot a tidal vector with three arrows on it. And then from that, add on your water track uh, and, and plot your course to steer. You're, you're probably not able to do that on your own. I've, I've never come across a rain rain where you could do that. And with the new systems, that is something that you're going to have to be able to do. That's what's, that's what's most important with this change. When they say the screen's got to be this size and this brightness and have these colours and that that to me is a lot less important than than the functionality and the software and and that's where our training is not going to be waste time wasted because all this stuff we're learning to do on paper come 2030 i don't know if the rya is still going to supply paper charts with these courses or you know require us to supply paper charts they're currently published by the admiralty if 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 the ukho and the admiralty are not making paper charts anymore then Either the RWA has got to find a new supplier, a new publisher, or they might stop supplying paper charts and they'll supply some software that enables us to plot these um, course of steers and EPs and positions and three point fixes on our uh, electronically on our electronic charts. If anything, I still think this is probably a better way to learn and really appreciate everything that's going on anyway. So, so if anything, you, you're probably getting one up on on people doing this course in 10 years time a couple of a couple of new things we are going to have to learn to do a lot better is uh, navigate the layers and, and the zoom levels we don't because we tell everyone to use paper charts you can't zoom in and out on 
we don't spend as much time talking about this at the moment but on our electronic charts vector charts we'll be able to say or oh, remove all the boys um only display these depth contours we can change the information that's displayed on there and the category zones of confidence where we currently look at our source data diagrams on our paper charts um we're going to be using catzoc symbols oh just uh, before you move on uh, paul westwood has a question um will ais be required to um there's no no reason to believe anything's changing with ais yeah there's 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 no no suggestion that that's going to change at all you don't need ais at the moment we personally don't have it uh, we're, we're quite comfortable doing all our collision regulations without ais we don't we, we don't have a chart plotter so <laughs> we wouldn't have anything to display the ais on that falls under irpcs really i've not seen any sign they're going to change currently irpcs state that radar is a, 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 an officially recognized way of detecting collisions and AIS is, is not. So um, all I can do is relay what I've heard from the UKHA and the MCA and the RYA. Hatsock symbols, this, this is just a, an interesting point really. With our electronic charts, I was saying that they breed complacency. We tend to think that we've got a really precise location, a really accurate location, pinpoint on the chart exactly where we are. On paper, when we're doing a pencil line and a pencil circle, we we've worked everything out manually, we get a really good feeling of, of how accurate we are and what our margin of error is. It just kind of comes naturally. There's electronics, you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And as you zoom in, the space between you and the rock gets further apart. But we don't know that we're exactly there. We don't actually know the rock's exactly there. And there's a really good example of that. And this is an ECDIS system showing the Solent, a very busy, very popular area for, for shipping and sailing. If you zoom in on Bramble Bank, you could plot a route that just skirts 50 metres off the edge of it and uh, be happy as Larry. It's two metres deep. I can sail across there, plus a bit of tide. But actually, if we load up the Catzoc as a category zone of confidence, it's what they call the accuracy of the chart. If we look up the symbols, this is a uh, category zone of confidence B here, and it's plus or minus 50 metres. So every piece of information on this chart in the one of the most heavily trafficked areas in the world has a plus or minus 50 meters so if we zoom in and plot a route 50 meters off bramble bank we might well be plotting a route straight over i suspect the reason that it's zone b here despite it being such a popular area is actually because the people who make the charts they know that that is a sandbank and sandbank shift no matter what they put if there's a big storm next week it could move a bit um, but this is just something that breeds complacency we just think it's so accurate there's just a nice saying which is a good a good navigator assumes they don't know where they are and and that's that's something it's, it's a saying that's not very common anymore but it's it's a good way to go and then that sort of keeps you on your toes but in my experience electronics actually make most people assume that they do know where they are and, and like I say, breeds complacency. And of course, after 2030, despite any changes that are coming, that does not mean paper charts will not be valid. It doesn't mean we have to go out and buy whatever new system. Paper charts will still be there. Imre have time and time again said, we're gonna keep providing these charts so long as you know, any yachtsman want them. Nothing's gonna change overnight. You know, it's gonna be a, a phase going on. UKHL will stop producing theirs, but we'll still have paper if we haven't had a chance to upgrade oh, oh talking straight for 50 minutes there we go <laughs> um give us give us a break someone ask us a question and i can have another sip of water oh alan alan oh no i'm in for it now <laughs> <laughs> not you <laughs> i'm good thank you um i'm just making a, a sort of an observation that um yeah, obviously, if we did a poll across everybody about who used paper charts and who used electronic, I, I guess there's a big percentage who are still using, they're using their chart plotters, they're using their tablets and their phones already um, for most of the navigation. Um, it seems to me that, that as leisure sailors, we're not so affected by this in that commercially, and of course, as you mentioned, there are plenty of commercial boats under 150 tonnes who will be legislated and have to spend lots of money and change their systems. But I'm guessing that as leisure sailors, we are kind of allowed to do what, what we want to do. So whether we're using a phone for navigation or a paper chart or a tablet or a dedicated chart plotter, and I guess 
that will carry on into the future. I mean, I, I totally see what you're saying. So at the moment, if, if we not got up to date charts on board, in theory, someone can come down an official and say, we can't go out because we don't have the right equipment on board. But that also has a caveat of it's always, they, they've always blurred the line. They don't know when a yacht stops and a dinghy begins or an open deck vessel, which can't carry the paper charts. You're right. We don't use paper charts all the time on yachts being told we have to have something. We might still just go out with Navionics. But there is always that chance that someone will stop us. I and mean, particularly if we want to sail abroad as well. If I've, I've had some very thorough inspections taking yachts to France, if you just get the wrong guy on the wrong day, and I bet they'd call you out if you've not got the right charts or, or chart plotting system. But yeah, it's a, it's a good observation. And, I, and again, another observation, which I guess will come into this future thoughts is a lot of the software like Navionics has community edits. Uh, and this is a bit like Wikipedia or false information, isn't it? Because people can currently put stuff onto charts available to everybody and who's there to actually to manage it. I actually asked someone at Navionics about community edits and how they're verified. And they uh, very quickly, uh, oh, oh, I think someone's just calling me. Uh, I've just uh, yeah, asked someone else. Um, I've just got to go. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I, yeah, we should do one of these masterclasses on Nav Navionics one day. And and the first thing I always say is turn off community edits because you don't know who, who the community yeah, is. Yeah, uh, that's one thing that I didn't mention is there is a lot of talk from the MCA about implementing an S mode, they call it standard mode. And that would be where any recognized system that's approved for official use They've not said it's definitely going to have this, but they seem to think it's a good idea. It will have a button that says S mode and you press it. And no matter what fancy features, community edits, auto routing, everything else that your app has or your software has, it will revert it to a standard mode where all the buttons and symbols and colors are the same on every recognized plotter. And so no matter what boat you get on, you jump on, press S mode, you know where you are, you know how to use it. And I actually think that's a great idea because <laughs> yeah, I think I always sort of re revert back to the S mode on every boat I get on anyway, <laughs> as much yeah. as I can. We've got a, a question in the chat here, Ed, who says, do Imray get updated by NTMs? Yeah, uh, so NTMs for anyone who's not sure, that would be noticed to Mariners. Imray uh, published their own updates and what you'll find on the corner of your Imray chart, there will be a QR code. Can you scan that? and it will give you the latest updates for your chart. Um, so they have their, their own notice to Mariners, if you like. I learned to sail via electri electronic means and drawing paper lines on it. I get get why, but it it just seems that it's moving in the right, what I would say is the right direction. Absolutely agree. I, I said there's a lot of benefits to digitalization. I, I always stand <laughs> by learning on paper really gives you a much deeper understanding but yeah totally agree and stuart cook has raised his hand he has a question oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know because the day skipper course i think it's just me charlie and charlie but stuart and alan both helped us write the yacht master and are both in our videos for the yacht master too uh, so anyone who's on the day skipper that's who that's who these guys are and that's why i'm going oh god <laughs> god shit yeah, I mean, I just uh, add so, a little bit to Paul's point there of, um, you know, we undoubtedly all do use electronic aids when we're out in the water um, in modern times, but I don't think you can ever get a better overview of where you where you are um, than looking at a chart. So even if you never actually use it for navigation or you don't in the future, in 10 years time, you've got your new uh, fancy electronic system on the boats and that's what does everything for you and it's working everything out and it's taking all the tides um, and everything live reading you're still going to never have a screen that's big enough to actually look at it and be like ah okay this is where i am this is what i can see 40 50 miles away uh, whereas an a3 chart uh, or an a2 chart um, is going to give you a much broader understanding uh, that's my belief of where charts will always be better until they can make rollable electronic um, A3, A2 charts. 
something yeah, in the chat here relevant to that as well. Uh, she was a crew on the ARC once and on a night watch, the electronic chart cut out. So we continued on the paper until the skipper was able to fix it. And they, she thinks it was a bumpy wave had shaken the connection loose. Yeah, that happens. And this is this is a this is one interesting thing that nobody seems to address is they will say you need to be able to navigate without GNSS. But personally, I've had electronic failures on the boat a lot more frequently than I've had GNSS failures. I've worked I've I've been working doing a survey hundreds of miles off the coast of Cyprus, for example, where we had a crack in the water pump on the main engine and the generator completely packed in as well and we lost all our ability to charge our batteries so what we did is we switched off everything that wasn't necessary for a, a long slow sail back in no wind and we just worked off a latin long readout off the radio and we just kept the radio on switched off the chart plotter switched off a lot of the other electronics that was only possible with paper charts if we're losing the paper charts then we would have been in a spot of bother then um did you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? Um, I, it was more of an observation, really, and and it's I, so my my job is in mobile apps, and the problem with mobile apps is that they're not always reliable. I mean, I love apps; we use them all the time, and they're fantastic. And I really like the new chart plotters and, and Navionics and so on. But I think the point that being reliant solely on electronic systems it feels very dangerous, particularly in in a lot of circumstances, unless you've got some kind of other hard copy backup. That's a good point. Good point. Well made. I've just been told this month, my phone's told me that it won't work next month because apparently it's too old and it's not supported anymore. And I've at times been at sea for long periods of time and been, been to places where the internet isn't good enough to buy a new phone and reinstall all the apps and so on. And so, you know, in those situations, I wonder, I wonder what would happen to me. Oh, Charlie Triggs. It's not, it's not really a question. It's just something that I don't think we've spoken about yet. Um, which is that it's also really satisfying to be able to turn turn things off and get to point A and to point B using paper charts, using those techniques. Um, specifically with like more celestial stuff, being able to do that the old fashioned way, if you like, is such an achievement. And having the skills as you part your day skipper course to be able to do that is is amazing. Um, so it's nice not to forget that as well. That actually in itself it's a really satisfying Thing to be able to do yeah absolutely i think if things the things ever do move too far away from paper maybe we'll build an, an optional course for people on more traditional navigation techniques because it is it is really rewarding done plenty of voyages across oceans with just a sextant and there's the feeling when you see your destination appear on the horizon exactly where it's supposed to be is, is fantastic really makes some of those trips Something I did forget to say is with the RYA syllabuses, I said there'll be a change in emphasis in sort of where we get information, but the skills will remain the same. I should also say that something like the RYA qualifications, because they are so internationally recognized and they are usable commercially, there's so many people involved in terms of the NCA and the IMO and, and so on. Those syllabuses are not going to change fast. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very slow process to be changing them over the next decade, at least probably 15 years. The RYA are starting that now, and they were supposed to be releasing a, a slightly updated syllabus this year with digital tide tables um, on a little website for all the RYA territories ports that we could use. But quick as a flash, that's that's already four or five months overdue from when they said it was coming out. So that's even that small minor changes. Uh, Nothing's going to change fast. And it's, yeah, it's been great seeing you all here. I hope it's been interesting, valuable. I know some of you already knew some of it. But like I say, I'm just passing on what we know. And what I'll probably do is next time we get an update, um, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, maybe we'll do another one of these with a bit of an update if, if we get an update and if there's much to say. But we'll definitely keep making sure that you guys know what's going on. I don't know if there's much else to say, really. Thank you very much for coming. See you at the next one. Okay, Charlie, when the house bears about 270 degrees, information to work out our distance from the lighthouse and use that. We might be perfectly on track, but if we're not on time. Have a look. I've got my phone here at the effect it has on our steering compass. Our echo sound is working. We can find a contour and follow it nicely into 